I would definitely, uh, yeah, having an office in there would be great, although it's expensive. There's another building actually, um, close to Jaho on Huntington. It's, uh, actually I'll point it out from here. So, that building that's like center frame with the little circular or circle at the top. Um, you know, there's this one which is square at the top. There's this one which has a circle face. Anyway, so that one, uh, let's see what I have to do with this one. So that building right there. That one would be excellent for offices. Probably be a little less expensive than the uh, Prudential Center, um, but it's really conveniently located and, you know, excellent access to networks in Boston. And, you know, also access in Boston, is, you know, there's easier to access Europe and England. Canada, Toronto, Montreal. Uh, you can, it's easy access to New York, more or less. It's also, uh, and then from there, yeah, I mean, you know, you can definitely access other regions. I mean, Boston has seems to have a stake, or definitely, the only thing it just seems, Boston has a stake in like, pretty much all the global communities on some level. Whether it be through academics, education they educate a lot of leaders throughout the uh, the earth right here in Boston um, you know schools like Harvard Boston University Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, what else do they have and there are a lot of others but obviously the UMass system um, and then obviously New England with all the Ivy League schools Yale Dartmouth Columbia Cornell what else NYU. Uh, so yeah, they have a. You know, it's a good place to be uh, to found to be founded, or a good place to establish a business or a company or a profession. You know, one's professional goals. So, so yeah, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, if Jamway definitely got to the point where. Having a, an office made sense. That building that I pointed to is probably where I would choose immediately. It's walking distance from my apartment. It's right here in Back Bay. It's a comfortable area, and uh, and even you know diversity, you know on some level, you know ends up being helpful at times. Um, you know, so. So yeah, that, uh, that wraps up pretty much what I wanted to show with regard to St. Clement's Eucharistic Shrine. And then I also showed a little bit of St. Cecilia and then Mary Baker Eddy's Library, Christian Science Plaza, Christian Science Church and that old, older part of the Christian Science or Christian Scientist Church. And just so you know, it's not really, it's not actually a part of Scientology. It's uh, distinct from that. But, uh, so I guess that's it, man. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Definitely contact me if you have any questions or any ideas for vlogs.
so there's a place for outdoor worker turns. So you know, the library doesn't have to be open to a turn. Uh, uh, things that we borrowed, and there's the glass uh, glass wall. I think they redid. Yeah, they redid some of this like two or three years ago, four years ago. There it is, the Boston Public Library. Yeah, the hours. So they open every single day, except for holidays. And the main, uh, I guess that's the main information desk, or it's not security. This is where you get uh, schedules for classes here. So they have one for children and one for adult. Here's the one for adult for January 2019. They usually have a class for email even, like Gmail, somewhere around here. Internet for beginners, that's a great class. I might even go check it out to see if there's any little things that will help me. And, um... They also do this Gmail class, but I don't see it on for this month. And look at that one. Intro to Genealogy and Family History Research. Six-week series. So I'm going to keep a copy of this. And I guess I'll show it to my mother and father and my sister so they can see for themselves. And then this cafe over here is the Newsfeed Cafe and that's a new cafe and they do news broadcasts from there. They have a show like twice a week that they do. I get lattes, tea, chai lattes sometimes from here. And that's another cool study area. I'll try to show some of that too. They have donations. And there's usually this guy, Jelen. Let me see if Jelen's over here. He's originally from Haiti, doing his sacrifice. Jelen! How are you doing? Me, Adrian. Seven. John Cam. Yeah. What are you up to? Um, you alright? Yeah. Alright, you're sleeping. Well, well, rest up. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up. See you. So yeah, you know, Jalen's pretty cool. He's real gentle, not joking, compared to, well, some other people. Not everyone, maybe, but definitely compared to some people that I know. So they used to have some little things here and here and here and over there, but they don't have it right now. So this is Tech Central. This is where I come to do my editing and publishing, mainly the editing part, because uh, it's a little more comfortable to be around people hanging out rather than trying to do everything in my room. So here, and I usually came to this side, one of these uh, for, but for those ones you have to have a library card, <clears throat> and as long as there's no weight you can use it <laughs> indefinitely for the day, but if there's a line or weight for it then it can be limited to one or two hours per day. So they have another, uh, so this is another uh, Tech Central kind of attendant person or librarian. <laughs> and this is the 15 minute computers over here. Pretty much you just have to log in. You can use any name, just put a name in, put a letter, whatever. Press log on, choose Central Express or Mac. And those ones are Windows computers, the other ones are Macs. And then it gives a, there's a password, login ID print it out. It comes out right there. There's that. And look at that. I can go use that computer, log on for 15 minutes. So let's see, which one is that? A1 password 2072 Windows 1. So it's right over here. And that's Windows 6. So it's over on this side. So there it is, and that's the one that I just reserved. So I can click here to log on, put a one, and the password 2072, press enter, and there it is. Now I have 15 minutes of access to a computer and the internet. And uh, you know, I can even check my email, for instance. And there it is, and they have all the basic programs.
Like, I haven't even had to purchase Microsoft Office since they have it right here. The Word, PowerPoint, um, Access, Excel. So, yeah. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and log off. So, to do that, just go down here to the left, click on Log Off. And that's important to do. Logging off every single time properly from public computers is very important because uh, when you use sensitive information on the computer, sometimes it stores it and people can access it. They know what to do. And then over here is another set of bathrooms. So there's a men's bathroom, women's bathroom, and some filtered water. So they even have some like filtered water. Right. And there it goes. And there it goes again. So here's the filter water and some more water. And hydration is key. There is no doubt about that. So, and this is where you can rent movies. So we have a mezzanine. The library is pretty cool, actually. Because, uh, especially this one, there's so many ways to get through from one place to another. Returns over there. That's where people check out movies over there that I just showed. Or books and our CDs. Ooh, and this one is, wow. So this is Russian language. So I'll probably take a look through some of this one day. I just, I don't really know. Look at that, there's a glove. If the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> so they have study rooms and conference rooms. So I'm just gonna go to, uh, the, one of the rooms I showed before, which was behind the Speed Cafe. Huh. Which is over there. Anyway, that's all Tech Central. And, uh, and then on this side is the 15 minute computers. That has a cool balcony. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. I wonder if this was ever private, if this was always a public library. Because, I mean, wow. It's probably one of the best public libraries I've ever been in or seen. So here's the back stairwell and all that. Woo! You can even slow that down, I guess, and see every little detail somehow. <laughs> That's my laughing. Wow, it's crazy. But yeah, no, this is really cool. So this is, you know, some of the dust there. And they have some other statues. So who is this? That's Maya Angelou. Sculpture of Maya Angelou. She bought it. What is her book? There's a lot of books, huh? And that's the fiction section. And there's something else over here. And there it is, look at these chairs. They're not exactly bowbacks, but they're close. I need a bowback, is what happened. Literary awards wall. So that's pretty cool. Swedish Academy. Hmm. I thought that would have been Germany. Anyway, so Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer Prizes. Novels and fiction. Huh. National Book Award. National Book Foundation. Ken Faulkner Award. Nebula Award. Science fiction. Fantasy writers. Hmm. Edgar Award. Probably up to Edgar Allan Poe. Rita. <laughs> That's close. Guess these must be some of the winners then. Yeah, these are definitely the winners. Okay, that one, T.S. Eliot. So he's from Massachusetts. Or lived here at some point in time. I think I got two. 
see who, I don't know, this is a lot. Oh, look at that. Man, this guy definitely made an impact on me. Although he might not have intended to, or maybe he was trying to impact everybody, who knows. But um, yeah, his book, uh, Travels, was a big one for me, and he went to Harvard Medical School. And uh, obviously Jurassic Park, that was the other one. But I really, it was more the movie. And then, um, Andromeda Strain, I wrote that one, read that one, but yeah, Travels was the big one that I liked from him. And it was non-fiction writing for him. Uh, there's also this guy, Samuel Shem. I think that's him. I'm not sure if that's him or somebody else. If he wrote that under, if that was his pen name, which was uh, about gomers in the hospital and residents. I read parts of that. That one's interesting. I think Dan Kramer really liked that. He knows that book. Dan Kramer. Daniel Kramer. He's a cardiologist now. Huh. Print it done. There's a lot of Dunn's all over the place. Ian Dunn, I know this girl Megan Dunn, she played soccer. There's another Dunn who played soccer, but some more. Not joking, it's like the Dunn's are doing well. <laughs> That's not laughing. Raw tid. <laughs> Holy shit. So anyway, this is some other stuff here. And I don't know, some of these are touch screens. This one might be. Yeah, there it is, yeah, it's a touch screen. Well, anyway, so that's pretty much the Boston Public Library. It's an amazing place. This is excellent. And this is the Coffley uh, branch, which is the main branch, you know, the central branch for Boston. Um, and then there are some other library systems around, like Cambridge has one, and Cambridge has a main branch that's pretty nice too. It's really good. Um, Brookline has their own system, but they also integrated with Cambridge and like Newton. But yeah, this is the main branch that I use and where I come. And one of the reasons why I'm so grateful um, to like, you know, it's really uh, Fenwood Inn, which is a Department of Mental Health shelter, and uh, Fen and uh, Vinfin, and specifically at Vinfin, it was what Louis Mercado and Darcy Ashley, who really helped me to get the apartment that I'm in now. You know, as a result of that, over the last five years, I've been able to publish about 17 books. With, I have about probably about 40 books total though. I just haven't gotten to to publishing the last what 23 or so. It's probably about that. It might be a little bit less. It might be a little bit more. Um, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere between 35 and 43 or something. Um, I haven't actually gone back to count them, <clears throat> but I am gonna get them all out. I am planning to publish all of them, and I have to just do some cursory editing just to catch all my typos. I don't usually have too too many typos. Um, but um, I do want to adjust the typos because you know I don't I don't want to confuse my readers with with typos um, but I do want them to be exposed to my mind and my brain so I don't hide that part but I try to take out all the typos so at least they'll know nothing in my novels is a typo and it was all intended spelt as was grammar as is on purpose as I am for most of it there's some where I, you know, conflated a little bit. There's some where I embellished a little bit. But it, really, I got to a point or a zone where I just got over it and put it as I thought it every time. Um, I did look things up, did do some research. Not a lot, a lot of research. I mean, some in-depth research. I don't know. It depends on your level of research. For some people, it would be a lot of research. For other people, it would be, you know, basic fundamental research. Um, it's definitely a high level of research on any standard. Um, but it's, you know... If I really were focusing, if I, were, if I was really focusing on uh, one topic right now, that I would be going into so much detail that, you know, it would just be on a different level. So, I'm, and I'm not at that point yet, still covering all the basics and making sure I understand all the basics really well and know how to apply it from first principles, because I know that's key. I mean, if that's not done properly, what happens is people just end up publishing things that are already known just in an updated form or in a review form over and over again for their entire career. And some of them think it's new findings, rotted, and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's another experiment, it's another data point. Is it really making the difference? Not really sure all the time. Sometimes it is for these large agencies, you know, NIH, what the government agencies, government bureaus, FBI, um, NCI, you know, National Cancer Institute, but for like independent researchers who are trying to make a name for themselves or find something or you know answer a new question or like get you know break get to the the you know the cutting edge you know the brinks of 
uh, research, you know, really takes you knowing all the basics really well. And I do give, a, you know, I follow some other people. You know, Elon Musk, I, I think he's definitely on that level, but I think, you know, he would really have to uh, either invent something amazing, which I, I don't really give him credit for doing that yet, or he would have to, uh, you know, find some kind of cure for something or something. Or maybe he'll do it through space exploration, since that's what he's kind of focused on now. But yeah, but he definitely, you know, seems to rely on first principles and understanding that. And I, I would imagine he probably knows a lot. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he, he knows a lot more than I do. So I'm not trying to compare myself to him. I'm just, you know, giving you all an example of someone who's doing it out there more in the business aspect right now. And I'm trying to focus more on the medical and surgical aspects, which is to cure something. Um, and that is, you know, one of the differences. And the reason why is because, you know, while it's great to, you know, push you know technology a little bit farther and a little bit farther the people that I really you know want to know and the people who I try to understand are the ones who invented things that we no one else would have ever thought of and my, my clearest you know example of that would be like the Wright brothers inventing airplanes you know I don't know the whole story and you know I don't know all the all, all the details how many other families who else was involved if there was a university setting you know, I, I, if he did it in his house, I really don't know. You know, my idea of that, for instance, would be the right one of the Wright brothers going out and you know observing birds and realizing you know we should be able to fly, and then somehow getting to the point of figuring out how birds fly and extrapolating that to mining metals and building planes. I I know that's probably more of a uh, a fable in some sense, but um, I do know you know that process is along the lines, you know, the process is the, along the lines of that. And it's just a question of when did it really start? Who really, you know, had that, that inkling of idea that spawned into and developed and evolved into airplanes from observing birds, for instance. So that's the way I explain it. Maybe it's just my explanatory model. I'm not really sure. I'm not the expert on all that. You know, someone from <clears throat> Boeing could comment on this and explain to me, well, you know, this is really what we know. This is what really happened. This is the part of the process that was well documented. And, you know, obviously I would be, uh, you know, some of those might be mute points maybe, or maybe it would enhance it. I just don't know enough about that industry and enough about the uh, evolution of airplanes um, from human brains. But, um, but yeah, anyway, that's, you know, you know, now if you translate that to science and cancer, you know, that people like Joseph Murray, who I definitely met, um, who else? Um, I guess Halstead made some great contributions, although I don't put him on that plane because, um, you know, I don't think he really figured out all the basics of, mess, of breast cancer to uh, figure out, like, adjuvant therapies and specific cures other than trying to cut every little thing out. Like he was trying to cut every rotted thing out of the patients. And um, that just debilitated them. Although we learned a lot. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, surgeons learned a lot. I don't know enough about surgery to put that in context on a really, you know, on the, the superiorist level, for instance. <laughs> I know there are people who know more about that than me, like Robert Tilden Osteen at Dana-Farber. He, I put on that level, although, you know, I don't think he, found a cure for any particular thing. He cured patients one at a time by being an excellent surgeon. But, um, um, but it's in part because I met him, you know, and I operated, well, he operated and I assisted him, really. So I assisted him in the operating room and I assisted him as many times as I could and tried to learn from the little bit that came out of his mouth during the operations. <laughs> he was really focused. Um, so, you know, I had to really kind of be as quiet as possible, kind of, and try to hear every little thing that he said. Um, wasn't too much, but he was really focused on the patient, obviously, and not, not as focused on I. So, um, you know, I think uh, Ian Dunn might have a chance to get to that, you know, and maybe this guy Nestor Tomic, he might really have a chance to get to that level if they want to. I mean, they also have to want to. It's a lot of sacrifice to uh, cure something definitively for populations of people and not just one patient at a time and the reason why is because you know the amount of knowledge and information that it takes to do that is just a lot and as a result of that um, you know not a lot of people are really dedicated 
And some people who are just don't know enough. I mean, I kind of fell into that category when I got to Harvard Med School. I was like, well, yeah, I got in. So that's an indication that, you know, I know something. But, you know, I mean, I wasn't at the bottom, bottom of the class. I might be now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, right back to soccer. But, you know, no, the truth is, though, that, I mean, I definitely realized, wow, things that, you know, I wasn't sure about you know, how important it was became very important and knowing what is important, what wasn't, would have been key. But quite honestly, you know, I don't have any regrets because had I tried to take it to that level in high school or college, I might not have got the grades um, that way because I would have been confused from the details and I might not have made it into Harvard. So for that reason, you know, I feel like I, I did very well. I know I was extrapolating every little nook and cranny of my knowledge to the highest extent possible when I was at the University of South Florida after an excellent, case, uh, excellent education at Bishop Moore High School. Um, and, you know, I scored high on my exams as a result of that. And I'm pretty sure I outcompeted a lot of other people, majority students, non-majority students, white, black, Indian, Asians. And then also, you know, USF, you know, probably not the most competitive academically, but there is some competition, especially amongst the honors college students. Um, and obviously uh, the Caucasians who are serious, you know, who choose to go there because they want to save money. Um, they don't want to go into debt by going to Harvard if they could have gotten in or Boston University or something. So yeah, I know there, there is some competition like this guy Vince who did really well from University of South Florida. And I think he's at Duke, you know, practicing medicine or something. But yeah, for me getting in, that was a big accomplishment and, you know, definitely helped transform my ideas and point me into uh, a direction of what is reality with those given the finite resources and what you know the conservative wealthy are willing to do and not willing to do for instance and obviously the liberal well to do as well and um, as well as other humans so you know it was a great experience but um, I guess just to summarize you know this is a, a vlog on Boston Public Library a quick tour just showing all the basics here and you know the uh, Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't finish up the last part, which is the courtyard. So that is what uh, we're going to do now. But anyway, so yeah, just you know, summarizing uh, kind of some of the resources that are open to the public even. Um, and it's open to anybody. But yeah, if you live in Boston or Massachusetts, then you can get a library card. If you don't, you might be able to, but I'm not sure if that's legal. So, you know, just not sure. Um, I think you have to have a place, at least in Boston, if not somewhere. Uh, definitely in Boston, but possibly anywhere in Massachusetts. Um, I'm not sure how the entire library system works that way. So hopefully the courtyard isn't closed today. Okay, there it is.
So actually I just walked from over there. Thought I showed it to you, but I was in a rush. And now we're here in his courtyard. They have a little sign up on the door. Caution, ice falling in courtyard. And you can push this little button over there to operate that. But here's the courtyard. So this is a great courtyard. And this is what, pretty much what I really wanted to show um, too. So it's pretty cool with these columns and this what light colored marble or something stone some kind of stone yeah it's a grainy stone of some sort and they have a fountain that they turn on in the summer they're probably careful in the winter because the water in the pipes can freeze or probably is definitely frozen now and the pipes can bust Pretty sure they're very careful of these things here because uh, they don't want to uh, lose all these vital resources that have been so delicately and well designed and constructed. I mean, these are excellent facilities. Just not laughing. Like for anywhere in the world, anywhere on earth. So, wow. Really not joking. So. Um, And then there's that tea room over there, which uh, I was told y'all I would point out again. So the tea room is right over here. So let me just finish this up really quickly. I'm walking as fast as I can without slipping on the wet floor. Another year in what Latin. And there is the tea room. Well, I didn't mean really to get them, but <laughs> at least uh, going too fast. So there it is. Yeah, this is a nice tea room. Uh, maybe one day I'll bring my sister and my mother here. Um, but yeah, my mother is struggling right now. Rati, she's doing well, but quite honestly, she's struggling for things that she just can't get out of, like the delusion of God and the delusions of Christianity and the delusions of Catholicism and the delusions of a lot of religions but for her it's Catholicism so she's uh, scared about her soul and scared about heaven and hell and judgment day just not laughing and then struggling to get the outcomes that she wants for her children it's kind of ridiculous that she just doesn't know so yeah, that's it for the day. That's the vlog. I'll just walk through here and show you the last parts. And that's it. So I'm about to head home. Gotta go rest up. I have really early mornings. I'm usually up around one, between one in the morning to three in the morning. And then, uh, um, you know, I work and write and do my stuff until about nine. Uh, well, until about seven, I go and eat breakfast at St. Francis House for 7.30 or before nine o'clock. And then come back and do a little bit more and then go back there for lunch at 11.30. And then by then I'm usually done for the day. Tired and I have to start recovering so that I'm not exhausted and can do some stuff the next day. So I'm gonna see if I can get one quick sample. And this is from Lint. Let's see. Hey, may I have a sample? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Want uh, red velvet or milk chocolate? I'll go with the milk chocolate. There you go. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Have a good Bye. one. Sir. And there's lint.
so yeah so that's it for me for the day I got some stuff to finish up and pretty much I got to prepare and that's so last set again wow anyway so I haven't been there in a while but um but yeah so and um, I got to prepare to my pretty much my iPhone so that I can uh, have it for Killington because that's in full effect on the 29th of January all my plans are in place for that even got the car earlier for the whole day so I will be taking my time and either with Amy or by myself um, so I'm kind of plus minus on it either way I, I wouldn't mind going by myself so I can just do everything that I, I have in mind immediately without having to be concerned about anybody else other than the other guests there or but if she comes that'd be great too because for the drive it'd be great to have some company we can talk so you know it's either way for me but I just let her know that I have to do all these specific things real quick and I'm only going to ski for about an hour or two and I'm not really uh, too clear on uh, how cold it will actually feel and be um, and you know sometimes when you're having a lot of fun the cold just doesn't matter so much but then sometimes it's just so cold just doesn't matter how, how much fun you're having so <laughs> for me I'm just not sure where I'll be on that uh, spectrum of possibilities with regard to the cold weather and fun at Killington. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it'll be a lot of fun, but I do realize it's going to be quite cold and I really don't have all the proper equipment for skiing. Not that I want that, not, not that I'm asking for it. It's just, uh, it just makes it a little more difficult knowing that it'll be even colder that way usually. Um, so that's the end of this vlog and the end of my vlogging for the day. If y'all have any questions, let me know. If you need anything, just let me know and I'll be in touch. So, I'm actually at the Prudential and Prudential Center. This is the sh closest shopping area to my apartment. Um, and I'm going to show some places. I, I was actually going to head all the way home, but then realized I might as well just do this now since I have so much more storage on this phone and I can get the things done that I was intending to do right, right now. So it's kind of apropos because I'm standing right in front of the Canada Goose store. And I'm a citizen of Canada, raw tit, and that is exactly when it occurred to me I should just stop and get this done immediately um, rather than prolonging the agony. So I'm really not going to show myself too much in this vlog. I'm just going to show some of the places, walk the Prudential, walk over to the coffee place that y'all see, maybe walk some of the floors, but point out some of the businesses that uh, I've gone to and frequented for different things. And the first one, I'll just start with the Canada Goose, although I did not buy a jacket here, but it's pretty much high quality from what I can see. So I would consider it, had I known of it when I bought L.L. Bean, maybe I would have gotten, gotten this one, but I don't think this company existed then. So we'll start with that. I'll work my way back and forth. So it might not be easy to follow my direct, my exact path, but uh, I'm pretty much gonna be going through the whole thing and from particular businesses to businesses to businesses. So y'all can see what's up. All right, later. So here's the first one, that's Canada Goose. So yeah, they have some premium jackets. These are actually warm though, so it's not just about the labeling, but they're probably more expensive than some others. But it might be worth it, something that I would've gotten. Sephora, so this is where I went for uh, to try to see some products. And, uh, thanks. So I guess I'll just go ahead and show them some of these products. It's feeling easier for me to, to know what, uh, what exactly they look like rather than just relying on memory. So these were some of them. See these Diva products, let's see. So it was something like this, Diva Curl Leave-In Decadence. So I tried that one, that was okay. Then there was, well this one I like the name, but I didn't try this one, No Poo Decadence. But if it was Poo Poo, wow, it'd be even better. So, let's see. This one probably won't be too bad. Diva Hair, Heaven and Hair, I like the name on that one. But that's not the one either. Oh, here they are. So these are the ones that weren't too bad. Styling cream, it was interesting. There was one that was, and then super cream. I think it was the super cream, um, but it was a little too thick. And I've commented on this in another video. It's a little too, uh, I think it ends up keeping a lot of dirt in the hair when it's too thick and sticky. Then there's this one, BB Curl. So that one, uh, I didn't actually try that one, but I might try that another day. Huh. And then there's that other one that I mentioned in an earlier vlog, 
that is uh, that this guy told me about here, but I don't remember the exact name. I think it's Maxine something or MJ something, but I'll have to uh, look it up again. And I'll probably come and try some and maybe choose one one day if uh, I find something that I like. But until then, it's probably just gonna be hot hair washes with hot water <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe some Nivea, Nivea moisturizer, which just isn't too thick, but it's a, you know, enough a little bit of oil that it feels better. Although, regardless of how it looks, I, I've been this way for a long time. Pretty much I don't give a damn how I look, um, but I still go for what I want. <laughs> sure, okay. So it's interesting, but I do factor that in, don't get me wrong. So all the little players out there, player, player, whatever. Yeah, if you factor that in, you'll probably get a lot more play. And that is true, and it probably does make life worthwhile. So, I mean, definitely for me it has. So, um, and then, so this place is pretty cool, Mini Lux. Um, and I, I might end up buying a pair of sandals from there. And then this is the other place that I came to, Avida. So it's actually Escape. There it is, Escape. And Avida. So let's see. Hey, I'm just gonna look at a couple products. Thanks. So it's these ones. So these are the ones that I might actually be willing to buy one and try um, a little more seriously. I mean the other ones too, but this one, if I can find something, I just don't know if they seriously have something that would work well for me. So there's a cream too. There it is. This is what she was telling me. So this is what I'm gonna eventually look into. This moisturizing mask, dry remedy. This might work well, and it's more specific for hair than the Nivea that I'm using, but I don't really know much about it. And I don't wanna waste my money on these products or getting into the habit of just using things over and over that really either aren't healthy or are not making the difference. But this is the one that she pointed out the oil specifically for hair, daily moisturizing oil. It was a little, uh, a little light, but you know I prefer lighter than heavier when it comes to these types of things in terms of lotions and moisturizers. I don't want anything too heavy on my skin or on my uh, in my hair, clogging up my pores. And then I think oh she said be curly was another one to look at the mask so again this one this kind of thing um hmm. curl enhancer co-wash conditioner ay, ay, ay. so i'm not sure exactly which one for that but i'll take a look at that later and then i think i tried one of these over here too or it was that oil so yeah those are the two all right thank you so down there they have another, what is that one? I think it's just Lord and Taylor's or something down there. But uh, I'm gonna head back over. So Lululemon, this is where I got my yoga mat. Lululemon actually. And it's a company from Vancouver, Canada too. <laughs> Somehow I keep running into all the Canadian things. Um, subconsciously or unconsciously or subconsciously without intention. Like I really don't, don't intend to but I end up in another Canadian atmosphere somewhere. Not joking. Um, so Hammer Made, this is where I got a pair of pants. They're pretty good, but they're a little, they've stretched a little bit, or they're a little loose, not really stretched. You're just, it's like the material softened or relaxed. Earl's pretty good for key lime pie. Pretty much just go there for a slice of key lime pie. <laughs> not joking. But yeah, there's the great stuff on the menu, but I definitely spent a good amount of money on food at nice restaurants. I've gone to Italy, Italy, that one was decent but it was high price for what they're serving from my perspective when I can go home and make some pasta from the box and uh, you know put some tomatoes in some prego sauce and it's more than adequate <laughs> but um but Luca's wow Luca's I'm willing to spend big bucks for their rigatoni not joking <laughs> not joking that's one of the differences you know it's just there whatever they do that preparation is not easy it would take me a lot of time to uh to really uh learn how to do that that way so that's one of the differences so i don't try to waste my money on things i can do myself and it's taqueria that's good for burritos and numpang that is a good place for this barbecue barbecue sandwich something 
And here's a New England place, Vineyard Vines. Probably based out of Martha Vineyard. So there's the New England. And then they have this Microsoft business. That one is excellent too. They know a lot about computers and answer some of my questions, irregardless if I'm purchasing a product that day or not. Um, and it's actually uh, affordable. And then, yeah, this is kind of my go-to place for, for pants right now, Club Monaco. Not too, too expensive, but they're comfortable and lightweight, usually. So every store, like, the, the stores in here are amazing. There's no doubt about it. You can't go wrong. You know, obviously that one's well known. I don't wear watches anymore. I don't like the asymmetry on my, my wrist and uh, the, the weight of the watch. Um, you know, just for time where, uh, you know, I can get from my phone now. So those are the main places in the Prudential. I'll stop at a couple others on the way back because there's another side to Prudential. But it's back in the opposite direction right now. So there's Papyrus, that's a great store for uh, stationery. And Sugarfina, they give samples of candy. So whenever they pass them out, I'll get one. Pretty much anything given a sample, I'll usually take. <laughs> I'm not joking, unless it's gonna kill me. And then uh, well, over here, David's Tea, they give out a lot of samples. And there's Peloton. So I did the, went and tried their cyclo, their stationary bike. And yeah, you know, it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. Mainly because I was feeling a lot of, like different angulation of my, my knees. Like positions that are, my body, that I am not a comp, I know, accustomed to. And so, kind of nixed the idea of really trying to get a serious cyclo and uh, shoes and all that even faster after that realizing that uh, that it really would make the difference would not make the difference and uh, that for me walking swimming is probably gonna be more important than riding bicycles so now I'm walking over to the coffee place there's coffee square hotel they have a nice lounge it's uh, free, one of the lounges is always free and they have music and a DJ and you can buy drinks, alcohol if you want to. There's a local star market where I do my grocery shopping. Um, the other place I go to is Whole Foods and Marriott. Um, they have a restaurant and lounge. This is a place I frequent a lot. They show a lot of soccer, um, like the El Clasico, Real Madrid, Barcelona, English Premier League, Manchester United, Chelsea. Liverpool and all that stuff they show it quite a bit of it um, and then they have like what three two or three Starbucks three Starbucks in here so yeah there's truffles I don't really buy too much from there but I got some candy once some chocolate so yeah this is lunch this is a good place to come before 3 p.m. So. And then this is Champions where I come here. I frequent this place quite often. I gave these guys one of my highest tips ever. Get the bartender a $50 tip once. Just one of the highest. I'll show you the place where I gave uh, my highest tip ever in my lifetime. You know, I did it partly just for the feel. You know, how does it feel, you know? And probably because, yeah, they definitely deserve it in terms of, you know, if they factor in how much people are willing to spend on service in the United States of America, which is a lot of rotted money. I'm not joking. I mean, I could live off tips. If they tip me that much, I'd be more than happy. But quite honestly, I really wouldn't want to go that route because when economic times are hard, there go all the tips yet again. So yeah, you know, like with waiters and waitresses, I mean, they probably should just give a minimum wage by now, but it, that'd probably be a big hit on the, some of the restaurants and businesses. So this is Copley Place. Um, that little skywalk leads to Copley Place. And there's like two floors, I guess, that, that I can access. The Canadian Embassy, or one of the offices for the Canadian Embassy is in here. I don't really buy too much over on this side. This side is a little bit more expensive than even the Prudential. <laughs> Not joking. Rats in. But if I do find something that I really do like or want, then I will. I did buy a lot of kitchen uh, kitchenware here. Williams in Sonoba, which used to be over there where the Jimmy Choo is now. And then over there, uh, Sir de Table, Sir de la Table or something. So, 
this one. This one I also got stuff, but I really like Williams and Sonoma. But this one's not too bad either. This one's pretty good. Um, you know, if I had to do all this stuff by myself, rocked it, we'd be using sticks, not joking. Sticks and maybe some stones. Um, someone would have to figure out how to make fire. <laughs> not dog. So there it is, the art and soul of cooking sur la table. That's where I got my ladle. And Barney's New York. And then Legal Seafoods, another place I used to go uh, when I was eating out at a lot of restaurants. But I haven't been doing that as much anymore as it starts to get tiring. You know, it starts to get old, you know, same old thing. Oh, another restaurant, another restaurant. Um, so, uh, but the food is great and the environment is a lot of fun too. <clears throat> and they have a Louis Vuitton and some other places. Apparently this is a supposed to be a world-class suit and some things. Emeraldillo Zegna. Ermenegildo. Ermenegildo Zegna. And Hydro. So I'm supposed to contact them at some point. Maybe I'll be able to help them with something. So, uh, might as well run upstairs. Up the escalator. By standing this time. And there is, oh, there's this, uh, I think it's Eva. Oh no, it's the next one over. That one, can't really see it. Chiolte, that one with the gold labeling, gold writing. They sell some decent creams, but it's like $400 a jar. Would I do it if I had if I had the money? Maybe one time, I don't know. Just, you know, is it that excellent? Not 100% sure. Is it great cream? Yeah, probably one of the best in the world. But when it comes to the economics, what else I can do to maintain my skin? Just so then jump up as the best option all the time. I'm <laughs> joking. Holy shit. But it was fun and would I buy it? Possibly one time. But it's not gonna be this month. So and then we got a Neiman Marcus over here. Ratchet. So in that one, Neiman Marcus, I think that's in the uh, movie. Is it what is it? Boomerang? It's an Eddie Murphy movie. J. Crew. I used to get my jeans from there sometimes. There in the gap. Ooh, uh, Eddie Murphy was in this movie where the woman is like Marcus and he was talking about she wanted to have sex with him and he kind of dodged her an older woman in her 50s or 60s I guess she just wasn't a gilf for him or in the movie anyway but anyway yeah that was a cool part in the movie and there's actually that's cool they have some lounges up there so they have some serious businesses in here some serious like companies corporations government agencies government buildings government offices or something like the Canadian Embassy I'll show you the uh, untuck it so that's a place I might actually go and get a shirt that one would actually they have one that really fits me and is a color that I like then I would actually pay whatever price for that so here's an exchange uh, place currency exchanger for all the travelers who get here and realize they need some cash exchange. Now let's see if the uh, Canadian Embassy oh here. So here's a mall directory. It's gonna be in there somewhere. Let's put that back. I don't really want to keep that on mind. Well, anyway. Let's see if it's over here then. Let me see real quick. I will take a quick look. So it's not actually in there. So yeah, I probably should hurry up and get to uh, <laughs> okay. sunglass. Hut. So I should hurry up and get to. Uh, so that's another interesting place. Well, I guess I'll just go back down and show the the cream place, this truffles thing or whatever. There's some other places over there, the Gap is down there, Banana Republic. I worked at Banana Republic in the stock room for, for about, uh, about three months, four months. And one woman, one of the managers, I felt like she was just giving me a hard time. I was like, completely over it. Like, I could always figure out the trajectory of that career, which is to hurry up and become a manager, then enjoy being a manager, show up, let the kids play in the store, make sure they don't damage any of the equipment or the products. Uh, make sure we, all the shipments get there on time, satisfy customers and you know cut out all the stealers and cheaters and anybody who's taking advantage of the business. Not too difficult, but just not so exciting. 
when there's so many other things to do other than sit in an office and do those basic things. Not stupid, not quite honestly, but the amount I've been exposed to, there's just a lot more to go for than being a manager of Banner Republic. But had she not given me a hard time, I might have been doing that. I'm just not joking. And I'm not even really sure why. So this is the place I'll lure. But uh, yeah, might be my superiority complex. Who knows, or a god complex. Anyway, this place is pretty cool. Let's see. I'll answer my quick question. Hey, I have a quick question. Yeah. Yes, Actually, sir. two quick questions. One, um, so the skin um, analysis that you all do, uh, skin analysis, we need to bring your skin specialist for this. Mini. Yeah, yeah. Is it possible to, like, how, how, what, what, what would I have to do for that to have uh, that I'm done? I'm not skin specialist, I'm just promoter. Skin oh, yeah. specialist uh, need to have, uh, like, appointment with the skin specialist and all this. And also, it so, costs money, so normally we do package when you get the eye lift treatment for... Uh, is it possible just to pay for a skin analysis by itself? Uh, I need to check. Could you I, check? I just don't do it. I don't do how it. How would I, I mean, can I leave my contact information and you let me know? Or do I need to come back and or uh, do you have come back? You, come back? you live here, right? So yeah, yeah. Times. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have seen me well. That's cool. Do you have and the other thing, do you have a sample of the truffle? Truffle? There's one called truffle. No, don't eat truffle. It's just a face motion. Can you try it if you like it? Yeah. Oh tru truffle yeah. or how do you say that? Truffle. 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 Alright. Truffle to me. Alright, great. Thanks. So anyway, that's the one. Truffle. Truffle. There it is. Rotten. Let me just put it on camera. Rotten. You see how difficult some of these words are? No, I got that must be French. All right, time to go. So that is pretty much Copley and Prudential. And wow, <laughs> that's great. So I just really want the skin analysis. And that I'm willing to pay for, not joking. A serious skin analysis, go through all the real stuff. I mean, I probably could have done dermatology, to be quite honest, but I was really more trying to, was more oriented with plastic surgery, but rotted, that is rotted competitive, not joking. There's one guy, Marco Ellis got in, and hopefully he's doing well, not joking, but I wonder if he's butchering any patients. That is really what I really wonder about some of my classmates. How many are butchering the patients and how many know when not to cut? That is an interesting question and a very important question for surgeons. But the ones who get away with it, rotted. Some of them make buku bucks, not joking. But rotted, not easy to get away with it, not joking. That's some high level of intelligence. Well, I'm pretty sure it's a lot, high level of intelligence to kill. That is the truth. Um, otherwise, you just get caught and go to jail. Or it's an accident. <laughs> Holy shit. Anyway. All right, y'all. So I think I'm... Oh, I do have a couple more things to show. Uh, but I'm about to wrap this one up. Trafoir. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Oh man, I don't want to make them anymore. So there's the truffles that I know, and for them, what they know is truffle. <laughs> my god. Anyway, all this stuff kept becoming more and more evident. Wow, Harvard, wow, immediate, boom, oh my gosh. And I was like, holy shit. But it was fun. Either way, it's been fun, which is the interesting thing. And yeah, it definitely trickles down, but it's different. All right, I'm gonna pause it here just to make sure my uh... All right, so yeah, there's, there's a lot in here. So I'm gonna show some other places and I think I'll take uh, Well, let's see Well, let's see It's almost like all these people here are my parents rotted on some level. So anyway, this club monitor again that I passed earlier This is a uh, different entrance and that is a uh, Probably really well to do bank, not joking. But uh, don't know all the details. Some of these will fall apart, but this one I don't think will. So that is my take on that. And although it's, you know, you have to check out all the fees. I'll be right back in a sec. A um, couple people that I sit with and hang out with and talk to. And you know, they're all Fitzpatrick Fours. It's crazy <laughs> how this happens. <laughs> oh, God. That's some assorted friendship. Some of it subconscious, I'm sure. So there's another Barnes and Nobles. That's the third one. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's the Starbucks. But here's the Barnes and Nobles. Yeah. And this is an excellent one too, you know. So this is where I, uh, I'm, you know, and I, I buy some of the books. 
that I read from here. Not as many as I thought I would have right now. But, uh, and then there are a few other places over here. I'm gonna show the uh, St. Francis Chapel too. <laughs> so here's that crazy door. I showed this once before. They actually have Wi Fi, free Wi Fi here. It's really for customers or people that use Prudential or work here, or staff or employees, or I guess the owners of the businesses. And there's flywheel. Um, I'm not sure if I'll go back for a class. It depends on how I feel. If I'm really, you know, probably it's likely, I guess, uh, as long as I'm in Boston for the rest of my life, then it's highly likely. And there's the post office. This is the second closest to me. There's one right on Mass Ave that I go to um, unless I'm here for some other reason, like to buy something or to get something to eat. You know, so to buy something usually. Um, or they, but they do allow us to cut through from you know point A to point B. So lost. Uh, my mother likes that place quite a bit. Dunkin' Donuts right here in the Peninsula. Oh, that's an excellent place, Sweet Green. So that's a great place, especially for people who are trying to improve their nutrition. And there's St. Francis Chapel. Might as well go in if it's open. So this is the other place I was talking about earlier on another vlog. St. Francis Chapel. Ooh. And there's the, uh, well, I guess my, it's not a rectory. And they're also connected to the internet with all their computers and servers and databases um, to, uh, I guess, maximize their plans on some level. So now I'm, oh, gonna go this way. This is like a little square with a big, uh, I mean, it's more than a courtyard, I would say, but you know, like an outdoor, indoor, outdoor park, I don't know, courtyard. All right, so there it is. And there it is, Prudential Tower. Top of the hub has the uh, sign for the restaurant, so center court. And here, this is uh, blue bottle coffee. I tried a lot of different lattes from different places and ranked them. And this one didn't rank as high as I was hoping or thinking it would have. It was probably about five on the list, the fifth on the list rather. The number one was Cup of Coffee, an Australian place, which it was amazing that one. A latte. They use some really well, great uh, milk or cream or something. Huh. Anyway, it's in my book somewhere. <laughs> they don't open this up until uh, it's warm enough, until the snow clears. But uh, they have uh, yoga, usually free yoga, at least once a week. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good yoga. Oh, I know where I'm going now. So the last place to show you, I'll show you where, where I left the largest monetary tip of my life to one guy who was, yeah, he was really good. I was kind of working through from homelessness to getting an apartment. You know, I'd go to a Cheesecake Factory to get meals just to get a break once in a while as I could afford it. And um, this guy, Walt, Walter or Walt, he used to travel a lot, so he told me some of his stories. You know, he told me stuff, you know, he answered my questions basically. So I gave him the uh, high tip eventually. I gave him 100 US dollars um, after one meal and made sure he knew that it was all for him. And, uh, you know, which, yeah, I mean, if I were just giving him 50 cents or a dollar, or two or even 10% or even 15 or 20. If I were to give him like maybe 30% or 50%, then it might've added up to that at some point. But, so he got a pretty good tip for 
his service. But wow, so I didn't show the uh, cheesecake yeah, factory. Like, I wasn't. But yeah, he will. Uh, you know, is uh, you know, I won't be doing that for a lot. There's no doubt about that. And there it is, cheesecake factory. So yeah. I guess I can just start up and show the uh, the area. So this is the restaurant and the bar is over here. So there it is. And that's him right there, that's Walt. He's the guy behind the bar working hard so time to go he doesn't really know me too too well but he does know me by face so uh. so yeah that's my vlog um that was really focused on well really started off on Boston Public Library but you know, as usual you know well actually this one sorry I'm confusing it too this one was on Prudential Center and Copley Place so yeah so yeah, I mean, I pretty much covered all that um, and showed some of the businesses that I support as a patron. And, you know, I would support, you know, in if I guess there's any knowledge that I can provide really that way because that's what's most feasible to me. But, yeah, as, as far as, like, you know, tipping high and all that, I mean, I'm pretty much over uh, tipping already because it just ends up being too expensive. Even if I go to more afford affordable places, it still ends up being expensive to tip unfortunately and I you know if that means I should cook all the time you know I would but the only problem is that that just isn't so sustainable especially when it comes to getting work done because it, it takes so much time to cook but uh yeah you know I guess to give you one more point you know African Americans versus Caucasian Americans um the net worth annual net worth of an African American from what I understood and from what I heard on, on, on the news or online, it's supposed to be $8. Frogged it, $8. I'm not joking. Whereas for a Caucasian American, it's like $120,000. My numbers might be off a little bit, but yeah, there's a big like discrepancy or disparity. I mean, it's not gonna change. I'm not trying to change it, because that's the way it is. But, uh, you know, I mean, the reality of changing things like that would mean overthrowing economies, overthrowing governments, overthrowing conservative business people, you know, and quite honestly, at some point that ends up uh, battling the militaries and getting shot in the head. So, many people have tried stuff like that. Che Guevara, Fidel Castro, says different communists, you know, uh, I know Venezuela, I don't know all the all the places, but you know, it just doesn't work so well. And you know, as a Jamaican, we're pretty capitalistic ourselves, so it's not really something I ever intended to do. But I have thought to why people would try that, especially in this day and age, when we already know it's just gonna fail. So there it goes. No more big tips for me so that I can continue to eat and live comfortably. Alright, like, subscribe, share. If you have any questions, let me know comment in the bottom and if you need anything just contact me